Hi, it's Frigid. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope today. We're going to chat with another one of the Kennedys. If you are interested in the Kennedy family, you can go ahead and check out the playlist here at Above Life Channel for the Kennedys. Today we're going to be talking with Edward Kennedy, also known as Teddy. All right, so come on in, Edward Kennedy. Hi, it's nice to meet you. Like I literally want to stand up and shake his hand because he literally feels very, um, he's broad. He's like kind of square-like. His body type is a square. And he uh, literally very formal, like nice handshake, like wants to shake my hand. All right, have a seat. It's great to meet you. I spoke, I've spoken with both of um, your brothers, Robert, and also um, John or Jack Kennedy as well. So I've spoken with them previously. So it's great to, to speak with you. And I know that you are the one that has most recently made your transition in the last few years. And I think it was brain cancer or some kind of cancer. It's cancer, yeah, cancer. And um, he's, saying, he's saying something about thanking his wife. He's got gratitude for his wife and um, his kids and I don't know if he has three kids but I see three I don't know what three means unless he's saying I'm the third brother but then he also I know had an older brother too besides Jack and um, Robert I know there was Joseph Kennedy too not just dad but older brother Joe that died in the war I know that so see I know some stuff about the Kennedy family about your family says I know you're a big fan I am a big fan yes I am I've been out to Boston myself a couple of times too, but I've never been to the Kennedy Library or anything like that. So, you know, maybe at some point I just have to go, have to go out there for that. But I've been by Harvard though. I walked right by Harvard and walked to the grounds at Harvard and stuff like just a couple of years ago. That was pretty cool. Actually, like four years ago. It seems like just a year or two, but it's been a while. So great. It's great to meet you. So there's a lot going on in politics right now in the United States. And he says globally, the world, the world. What do you feel um, is the Edward Kennedy? And he says, you can call me Teddy. You can call me Teddy. He says, all my friends do. It's, it's fine. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. I remember my parents having a button. Um, it was blue with white lettering and it said Kennedy 80. So you must have had a run for the um, presidency. I don't remember that. I was young then, so really young. So I wanted to remember that, but I remember the button. So I know you must have ran for president. And he says, you know, he says, I tried, but I couldn't, I, I was definitely not able to um, meet the expectations that my brothers set. You know, he said that, he says, There's a, there was a high bar set for me before me with my brothers and their success in politics. Um, it's, it's hard to, uh, to compete with a ghost, he says. And with two, good luck to you, he says. It's difficult, difficult. And besides, I could do much better in, in uh, public service when I could work for um, the constituents or the people that I care about the most. Oh, I have a dog right here, you guys. Hey, you want to come up? Come here. Just a minute. Oh, here's my dog. Hi, how are you? Do you want to sit here for a second? Okay. Sorry about that. He says, I had, I had a few myself. It looks like border collies or something. It looks like. Is that what you guys had? It looks like two dogs. I can see them. Wow. Okay. All right. All right. So difficult because of your brothers in part. He says, I couldn't. I wasn't ever much of a celebrity like they were, but uh, okay, so I'm going to ask you about um, part of your history was, and part of what I would perceive as uh, something that would kind of bar you from having any kind of higher office than you held would, like the presidency, like I couldn't imagine, to be honest here, um, Teddy Kennedy, I couldn't see you being in any kind of um, higher office because of some choices you made when you were younger and all the car accident and the driving and the woman that was killed and things. Um, there's some, you know, drama there and it's real. That was real. He says, yeah, he said, I'm not going to uh, minimize or make excuses and for my uh, choices in my life. But I do believe that there is uh, such a power in forgiveness and 
you never really um, can forget a situation like that. <coughs> but it's not for me to say or to, to, to value, to put a value on, on life. And I think it's, uh, uh, it was a tra terrible tragedy for all involved. And I wouldn't say that there was a, here, Louis. There you go. I wouldn't say that there was a, uh, I would say that there was a lot of um, story embellishment around what actually happened that night and painting me as a reckless um, person, naive in the ways of the world or, or um, the fact that I didn't consider consequences is true. I think that could be true for anyone in that situation. So you keep saying that situation, is that like the driving drunk piece? Well, he says it was a tragedy. And I'm not in any place to, to uh, put a value on one life over another, he says. I shouldn't have been in that situation in the first place. None of us should have been. So do you think that that really is the reason why you're not, your political career wasn't any, couldn't be any more than it was? I mean, do you feel that? Uh, yes, he says, yeah, yes. You know, and I thought, he says, you know, and I thought that over time, through a lot of healing and a lot of deep personal regret, I thought, Maybe it was possible to move on, to move past the, the choices back then that I made and the consequences. But I never could really let go of that. Not fully anyway. So in the afterlife, did you reunite with the woman that died that night? Yes, 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 we did. And there's a, a piece in, what? Oh my goodness, okay. Excuse me. I know, do you need to go? What do you guys think? Do you guys think I should actually use this video and share it or not? I think we're having some deep conversation here with Teddy Kennedy, Senator Edward Kennedy. And we're talking about the situation with the car accident and the woman that died because of you or because of you. And you're saying that you connected in the afterlife and that you met or connected. Can you talk about that a little bit? Because I think it's it's curious how that works and it works differently for different um, spirits and different circumstances, I believe. That's what I've learned anyway here at Above Life Channel. So, Teddy, can you talk about that experience? What, what do you mean that you met and the two of you connected? What was that like? You know, it's a, an incredible sense of grace there's a, uh, a real soft feeling that comes over you when you're given a gift of forgiveness, of love, without any kinds of strings. There's no such thing as the punishment or 
guilt that we feel so much so deeply in our human lives. It, it was like torture for me to live with that in my heart. And it's the moments after my death. I saw my grandmother, actually, and my brothers. But then I saw this beautiful young woman, and I remember she was so beautiful. She had this hair that she just was so beautiful. And I, I felt this, this sense of this really strong feeling, this warmth in my heart, and it was, I forgive you. You are forgiven. And it's as though all the painful memories that I've been carrying for years were gone. And there was this real light energy. This just free feeling. And I would liken it to just almost like a lullaby being rocked to sleep, but just so, so incredibly connected and all around and just swallowing up any kind of dark energy, darkness and pain is just gone. That is really, wow, that is really beautiful. That is really beautiful. Is really beautiful. Wow. Wow. So, Teddy, do you have anything to share with us about when you went into the afterlife? You said you got to see your brothers. And then it looks like there's a baby over there, too. And then you feel gratitude here for your wife here. Something about my sons? I don't know. Are the sons the sons? Oh, your dad, oh. He's, he's getting this, he's sharing with this me, with, he's sharing this with me that it's like his dad felt very proud of him and so how he felt when he went into the afterlife. It's like every, all the judgments and things that he carried with him and the shame and the guilt he carried with him, him just dropped away and then he just had this, all this like, all these things that he needed as a human, he got when he went into the afterlife. And he says, I don't know how that is, how that process is, you know, how that works for everyone, but I, I can share how, how it is, how it was for me when I got into the full, um, the fullest version of myself and to the acceptance. So were there angels? Did you see angels when you crossed over and transitioned or? He's showing me a heart problems. He must have had a heart attack or something earlier in his life because he's showing me having experience where he actually visited with an angel before, almost like a near-death experience, but he didn't actually die. And then he's also showing me when he was really young, he must have been sick or something because there was like three times in his life where he could have had exits, like he could have left, but he didn't. So he's showing me like a patterning here. So did you always want to be in politics? Did you always want to be in, in public service? He says, that's pretty much all, all the choice we had. He said, it's like the family business. You go into the family business. But were you interested in politics and law? Were you interested in those things? Yes, absolutely. He says, well, there wasn't really anything else. He said, really, Bridget, there wasn't, what was I going to do? What, what else would I do? I suppose I could have went into business, but that was absolutely the opposite of what we, um, of what the legacy of the Kennedys is. Well, I don't know that it's the opposite, but it it's definitely different than public service because oftentimes the public service being in the public sector, being a public servant is a very different mindset than working in business and those interests are very competing, competitive So, at times. So I can understand that. What is one thing that you wish you could have accomplished when you were in the Senate? What was one thing you wished you could have accomplished while working in government? I think healthcare, he says healthcare. There's so many social issues that 
human issues that need to be addressed and basic needs that are not being met. And that's the one thing that government seems to be blind. And it's easy for individuals and families to look the other way when it's not you that's in that situation, but it could be your neighbor, it could be your child's best friend, it could be your coworker that is suffering and struggling to not just make ends meet, but to take their kids, their children to the doctor and to get the proper health care and the proper access to prescription and medication and things that they absolutely need to have in order to survive, just the basic core things that should be just standard for all. So do you believe in like a socialism approach to that? No, he says, no, not, that's over, that's over exaggerated. The whole socialist approach to healthcare and, and universal healthcare is so over exaggerated, it oversimplifies all of it. And it's something that's just simply used, especially during election time, to group politicians into categories that seem undesirable for election. It seems like we're the ones that want to take care of people that can't take care of themselves. We're the ones that want to take your money and give it to people who don't deserve it. And that's not at all the truth. That is not at all the truth. All right. All right. I don't really necessarily want to talk about politics, but I suppose when I'm talking to a Kennedy, I kind of have to do that a little bit, I guess, huh? So is there anything from the, so for the afterlife, are you guys all, all you, all you Kennedys and stuff, and maybe even like John McCain and the Reagans and the Bush, Bushes and all that, are you guys all like, watching down here all this stuff in the United States playing out with our government right now and watching it like a football game? Like do you guys have nachos and stuff for halftime and you know, like what what it, what is that like? Cause that's so curious, so curious to me. I mean, I know in the afterlife spirit is so different than human life experience, but that's kind of what I bet some of the viewers are thinking about picturing, aren't you guys kind of picturing that in your your mind, all these famous people, like even Abraham Lincoln and George Washington, like, you know, looking over all of us, FDR and all that, you know, like, what the heck are you guys doing? What are you guys doing down there? What are you, have you lost your minds? <laughs> well, you know. So what is that like? Can you see the things that are going on? Can you, do you have influence over any of that stuff? He says, you have much more than I do to say about that. He said, it's not for us anymore. It's not, we are not really all that interested in it either. He says, there are many other things to be doing. We don't really have a vested interest in your turn, your time. It's, it's quite, quite as though our work is done and now yours is, is it's in your hands and we can't really wish anything different or want anything different in in the way that you're asking about it. No, we, we can't um, step in and make changes. We, we can give advisement if that is asked of us. We can serve as a guide and and as a um, subject, subject matter expert on any of the issues and can provide advice in that way, but we aren't often asked and if we are, then we're certainly happy to do that, to provide that. You know more than anyone, perhaps, it's more about believing in yourself and really allowing yourself to follow your heart and what is an integrity and alignment with your goals, your values, your beliefs, and understanding that what you believe and what you do then in turn take action on really does have an impact on others, many, many others. And it, and it matters more than you think it does. Your opinion, your view really does matter. And that's why voting is so important. It's very important to vote. Oftentimes people use it as a, uh, they're not happy, they're not pleased with the choices they have so they don't make a choice. Well, not making a choice is making a choice. That is uh, most certainly been proven by recent history. That's very true. Very, very, very true. So. All right, you guys, this is Bridget at Above Life Channel, and you've been watching an afterlife conversation with Edward Kennedy, former senator and member of the Kennedy family. 
If you're interested, check out the playlist here at Above Life Channel for the Kennedys. Remember, the purpose is always to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope because this is your life and the purpose is to live it. Just live it. Thanks so much for watching and for meeting my dog tonight in the video. See, sometimes this happens. You got to work when you feel inspired. And so I did tonight. <laughs> Thanks for watching, you guys.